Like most family physicians, I do a little bit of everything. We see all types of patients. We work in training third year medical students and work with the residents and family practice. I am excited about adding uh, the bedside ultrasound as a way of um, managing risk and letting people know that they may have something that could be catastrophic that they're not aware of. Particularly what we wanted to accomplish would be to be able to do right upper quadrant ultrasounds to rule out gallstones as abdominal pain is, is a very common presenting complaint for our patients here in the office. As I've taken an interest in cardiovascular medicine and done some additional uh, work in learning about lipidemiology, I became aware of uh, CIMT, which is carotid intimal medial thickness. Uh, the carotid artery is right here, and it's easy enough to follow its cephalad. After starting this, I had a lot of hesitation. I was lucky. Uh, USC School of Medicine Department of Ultrasound has a grant and they help me. I do a lot of injections with uh, shoulders and knees. Recent training with the ultrasound in those areas, it seems to be pretty straightforward and uh, even though you have good experience, the ultrasound helps to guide you to the right joint space or, or area for injection. When we first started doing our training, we were really scrapping to find cases to go on. Now we fill up our, our day of training and, and uh, have to defer some things that we feel comfortable with the other days. This type of practice, if, if you enjoy procedures, then you would enjoy uh, ultrasound. Ultrasound uh, does give you, surprisingly, more control over clinical conditions than I really thought I ever would have. Being in a rural practice setting, a lot of our patients in this area have difficulty with transportation. For them to go 20 to 60 miles away to get a, an ultrasound procedure is, is quite a, a barrier to care. Well, I had a motorcycle accident and the brunt of most of the force was on my shoulder and my knee. The procedure he did was went and looked around my knee, looking for the pockets where the blood, there was the most blood. You could see it using the ultrasound, so he knew what was going on. So that helped a lot. It was less sticks with the needle. <laughs> we had somebody come in who does have significant vascular disease, risk factors, but previous to that, obviously nothing has been palpable on her abdominal exam, but there is evidence of a significant aneurysm in the upper part of the aorta. It's so fortunate that this has happened and I understand from Dr. Tuck that I need to quit smoking, uh, reduce my cholesterol, uh, just shape up. It's not something that that can be put off. I need to change my living habits now. Uh, ran into one man who had his hematuria and we found a cancer of his bladder. Um, it was an easy scan. It wasn't hard. It stood out and screamed, I'm a cancer. We scheduled him for an MRI the very next morning so that he could be NPO and we had him to a specialist in record time. Now this is nothing like what would have happened because routinely of course what you do is you say, huh, take some antibiotics, see if it clears up. Probably what you've got is a hemorrhagic cystitis, and that's what we would have thought also. And what if it had gotten better? What if everything had calmed down, the bleeding had stopped, and he went on for a prolonged period of time before anybody ever found that cancer? Well, that's where you make a difference in that particular man's life. The University of South Carolina Ultrasound Institute would like to thank the Duke Endowment for making a difference in the lives of people living in rural South Carolina. The Ultrasound Institute at the University of South Carolina School of Medicine is committed to improving the quality of health care in rural areas of South Carolina. For more information, visit ultrasoundinstitute.med.sc.edu.